I'm doing an unboxing and review of some Atlas InScale three bay hoppers on Ron's Trains and Things right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroading tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. The model railroad industry has become one of product announcements and advanced reservations. Whenever manufacturers come out with new locomotives, rolling stock, structures, they make an announcement of that product and then ask that customers make reservations for those products, which basically amount to commitments to buy them whenever they come out. These are the ways that manufacturers gauge the production numbers that they need whenever they make a new runs of models or other products. Now, there's a lot of debate about the advantages and disadvantages of advanced reservations for both the consumer and the producer of those products, and I'm not going to get into that whole debate today. But one of the things that does sometimes happen, in fact, it just happened to me, is that we see a product announced, and we think, oh, that's something I'd like to have, so we make an advanced reservation. And then over the course of the months, sometimes many months, between making the reservation and the actual introduction of the product itself, we forget that we made the reservation. That happened to me this week. I got an email earlier in the week from Brooklyn Locomotive Works saying, the product that you ordered is on its way. Well, I had completely forgotten that last July, I ordered some products on advanced reservations through Brooklyn Locomotive Works. Well, that package arrived in the mail today, and so I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of an unboxing and maybe even a little product review. I don't normally do product reviews, but I think we'll take a look at what's in this box and see just exactly what it's like. So let's go over to the workbench and open this box up and see what's inside. So here's the box that I received today, and we're going to just open this up and see exactly what is inside. Always excited kind of like a kid in the candy store when I get a package in the mail and uh, let's see just exactly what we have in this one we have some New York Times newspaper I'm going to do a little bit of back reading of the news Get it unwrapped here. What I have is three Atlas Train Man 90 ton hoppers. Now, Train Man is what I would call an entry level line that Atlas produces. Uh, they are a car that doesn't have quite as fine a detail as uh, some of their higher lines. Uh, things tend to be a uh, a little more bulky and not quite to, to scale as far as the detail is concerned. But in this case, I ordered these uh, because I have a coal train uh, that is made up of three bay open hoppers. And I needed to fill that train out a little bit because I didn't have quite as many cars in it as I would like. And these will fit into that train really, really well. So I went ahead and ordered these and... Uh, a nice thing about the train man line is it's a little less expensive line so if you want to buy some newer cars but you want to practice doing some weathering or uh, some other types of upgrades uh, these are a little less expensive car that are, are great for doing that um, now I'm going to go over to a turntable over on the layout and we'll open one of these up and take a look at it and see just exactly what uh, what these cars look like while I'm here I had a second package that arrived in the mail today and I thought we'd just as well open it while we're at it, just to see uh, what it holds. Um, again, this is something else that I've ordered. I think this is something that I actually ordered through Amazon, but it was shipped uh, from a company called Lights for Models out of Dublin, Ohio. And we're going to see what we have in here. Uh, that is my invoice and some business cards. But uh, what I really have inside is a couple of spools of fine easy line. Uh, it, this is a great product for making fences, for making 
uh, telephone lines. Uh, I also intend to try to use some for making some, some tie down strapping on some flat cars and some center beam flat cars. And I've purchased it in two colors. I have a black and I have kind of a rusty brown color. A uh, rusty brown color would be great for making barbed wire fences and uh, plan to, to do some of that work with it. So we'll, we'll be seeing some of these products in future Ron's Trains and Things videos as we'll be doing some other modeling projects with it. And um, you can look forward to that in the future. We're going to take a closer look at one of these three bay offset hoppers. Uh, this particular one is uh, Atlas product number 50-002-861. It is a BNSF, uh, the road number is 646637, and uh, as you can see, it is painted in the modern H3 or swoosh uh, scheme, and we're going to take a closer look at this model here. We're going to open it up. Uh, of course, it comes in this nice jewel case, as uh, almost all in-scale rolling stock and locomotives do these days, and we'll pull this out. Uh, no other real documentation or anything that comes in the case itself, just uh, just the model. And uh, here we'll we'll take a look at the model. Now, uh, again, this is an economy line of rolling stock for Atlas, and so it doesn't have near the detail that their master line uh, products do. Uh, but we'll look at, the, at what it does have. The, the lettering on it is uh, nice and crisp. It doesn't have all of the very fine scale lettering on some of the placards and things that uh, the master line or, or other fine scale rolling stock might have. Uh, but the lettering that it does have is nice and crisp. And even the small lettering is, uh, is uh, readable. Uh, now you'll notice on the details like the steps, and especially the stirrup steps, uh, those things are pretty chunky, not not real fine detail, but if a person wanted to uh, to do some upgrading work, especially if they wanted to practice on uh, doing some upgrading work, you, know, you could come in and remove these steps, and certainly very easily could remove the stirrup steps and replace them with wire grab irons and uh, wire ladder rungs and uh, do some upgrading and make us look a lot better. If we look at the bottom, we'll notice that it has... Uh, just a complete absence of, of braking detail. Looking closely, it doesn't even have a brake cylinder on uh, on the end. It does have a brake wheel, uh, but uh, but no brake cylinder, no no braking detail uh, at all on this product. Uh, looking around at the ends, again we see the same kind of situation with the detail. Uh, this does come with Accumate knuckle couplers. Uh, now some people don't care for the Accumate couplers and would prefer to upgrade those to a um, microtrains coupler. Personally, I have never had a problem with Accumate couplers. I find them to couple well uh, and be very compatible with the microtrains couplers, and I've, I've never had a problem with them. And in this case, I probably would keep the, the trucks and couplers on uh, on this car as they're not, uh, not too bad. Uh, I certainly would upgrade the wheels. It comes with plastic wheel sets, and I uh, would want to upgrade those, upgrade those to metal wheel sets. Now looking closer at the side, I'm not sure how well you can see this on camera, uh, it does have some, some rivet detail uh, around the panels, uh, which is nice. Uh, the rib details are, are a little oversized and bulky, uh, but again, that's just part of this economy line. The cars do come with coal loads. Uh, now the coal loads look uh, rather plastic and they uh, are pretty shiny but could be upgraded with uh, a little bit of paint and, and maybe a, a little more of, you know, fine scale coal to add to the products. And the loads themselves are removable, but they don't come out real easily. I had to get a, a hobby knife, as you see here, and kind of pry uh, the, the coal loads out. And uh, they come with the little stands on them to hold them up in place. Um, a person could make those a little more easily removable by maybe adding uh, a washer or something magnetic underneath where you could pull them out with a magnet. Now, when you do remove the coal loads, you look inside the car, and again, you don't see a lot of detail inside of the car. Uh, in fact, you see this big shiny uh, weight down in the bottom, uh, which helps to, to, to weight the car itself. Uh, but you don't get a lot of detail in there. I would definitely, if I was going to run this empty at all, would want to come in and probably paint that weight down in the bottom, the uh, 
the closest match I could to to this uh, oxide red that the, uh, the is the color of the car. And then, of course, you could come in and weather the inside of this car uh, with some black to simulate some coal dust and such and uh, might take away from the fact that it doesn't have a lot of detail inside of it. Finding that putting the load back and getting it straight is almost as complicated as it was to get it out in the first place. And it keeps wanting to go in crooked. Um, the easiest thing for these cars would be just to run them with the loads in them all the time uh, because they're, again, a little complicated to get the loads out and definitely not that easy to get them back in straight. But probably if you're doing any operations at all, you're going to want to remove them and, and put them back in as you're doing those operations. So uh, that's definitely something you would want to play with and work with a, a, a little bit. I've got my little postal scale out here and I know I've never done a video on weighing cars and bringing them up to NMRA weight standards. Uh, I'll do a whole video on that someday. But I'll just tell you, and I always keep this information on a little piece of paper right here on the top of my scale, but to meet NMRA recommended practices, an in-scale car should be half an ounce plus 0.15 ounces for every inch of body length. Well, I measured this car, and it is three and a half inches in length. So if we take our half an ounce, and then we add 0.15 times three, that comes to 0.45. We add those together and we come up with 0.95 ounces. Or in other words, this car should weigh just about one ounce in order to run at its uh, optimal efficiency on your layout. So I'll turn my scale back on here, get it to zero, and I'm gonna put the car on here. And you'll see that this car comes to a weight of 0.6 ounces. So it's actually underweight by uh, about four tenths of an ounce. So you could run this car this way, it would, it would certainly run, but in order to run at its most efficient and, and prototypical manner, uh, you'd need to add about four tenths of an ounce of weight to this. So maybe some, some stick on uh, lead weights. Uh, or some BBs in the bottom of this car uh, would allow you to bring it up to its weight standards. But then, of course, those are going to be things that, if you're running it empty, are going to show and are going to, again, take even further away from the prototypical look of this car. So there are lots of decisions that uh, you'd have to make if you were wanting to run this car and make it look as prototypical as possible. Uh, but there still is a lot of potential here, I think. Uh, if you are interested and willing in do, to do some work uh, in modifying, improving, and weathering a car, uh, there, there, there's some potential here to be able to make a, a car uh, that looks pretty nice to run on your layout. And certainly, uh, these cars can save you some money. I didn't mention earlier, but the MSRP on these cars is $18.95, and I've already seen them online for as low as $13.95. Uh, compare that to the MSRP on a similar car from Atlas Master Line Series, uh, which runs $22.95. You see, you could definitely uh, save a few dollars by uh, getting some of these cars and doing the upgrades and the improvements yourself. If you're looking for a three-bay offset hopper that's affordable, that you can modify, weather, do a little work on to make it exactly the way you want it to be, then these Trainman 90-ton hoppers from Atlas might be just the thing you're looking for. I plan on doing some upgrades and some modifications as well as some weathering to them, and I'll show you what I do to them in future episodes of Ron's Trains and Things. If you enjoyed this video, then here's a link to some more videos that I know you'll enjoy as well. Also, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up down below, share it wherever model railroaders hang out, and of course be sure and subscribe and click the little bell below so you can catch future episodes. I also hope you'll take a moment to look at the description down below this video. There you're going to find a link to my Amazon page, my Patreon page, as well as links to my Twitter account, my Facebook page, and other ways that you can connect with me. So be sure and check out those links down below. I hope you'll join me again next Tuesday as I'll be bringing you another great model railroading segment, and I look forward to seeing you then. Ten, Lizzie?